Greetings, greetings, greetings. Welcome to Heal Talk Tuesdays with Lisa. It's so good to be here with you, isn't it? Well, today we are going to be talking about vices. And what do I mean by vices? It's um, every single one of us has a vice, right? So today I wanted to share and let's have a conversation. I want to know what your vices are and how do you cope with stressors? So we're going to be talking about stressors um, and what is creates stress in your life and how do you cope with your stress and what are your vices and how do your vices help you? truly help you. So what do I mean by our vices? I shared a post or a blog that had something to do about what we do in order to cope with um, stress, with trauma, with uh, things that trigger our emotions. And it's so incredible to know that our emotions play a huge part, truly play a huge part in our life with so much of everything, uh, what we do and how we cope with everything. And I had, a, I had someone respond as to, yes, my friends, as they were going through divorce, they went through so much of um, heartache and pain and emotional trauma. So, and it hit their gut and they were having digestive problems and aloe vera helped and they found other means to cope with it. Having gone through divorce myself, I like to call it a divorce. It is a separation. Separation in life is um, the disconnection. When it comes to a to the point that we want to separate and divorce, it's not an easy thing. In a way, it's like that person does not want me anymore. I am not wanted. Uh, that person does not care for me. I am not cared for. I am not safe. So in a way, there are so many emotional triggers when it comes to divorce. And being human being emotional people, that so much of the choices that we make is so emotionally based, we forget that it's not only the separation of the house, the separation of the furniture, and dealing with the children, or even families. All the families that come and say, I knew that person was not good for you or everything. So there's so much that is happening. And even if the person who is going through the divorce has not had time to cope with it, the triggers are happening. So what does that person do? They find means, other means to cope and satisfy their pain. Some smoke, some drink, some eat. Does that make sense? Everyone finds a vice to cope with their pain, their problem, their drama, their trauma. So today I wanna to talk about one of the vices and that vice is eating. Just two days ago, I got a call this person telling me if uh, actually it was a consultation call I wanted to consult and find out if you work with eating eating habits and as I said of course I do but what part of eating habits 
Is it the diet aspect of it? Because I, as a clinical hypnotherapist, it's it's not what I work with, but what is it that you need help with? And she said, it's not the dieting. I've done all kinds of diets and I still cannot lose the weight. So after a few moments of call, uh, talking, and we got to discuss about the oral gratification. You see, eating is an emotional thing. In a way, when we eat emotionally, that's where the, I call it, the problem is. It's, it's not that we are eating on time and everything so that when you go on any kind of a diet they give you portions they tell you what time to eat and there are so many people who eat properly truly eat properly they eat on time they eat all the right things and they eat their proteins everything and some even cut so we're going to talk about that cutting part also cutting portions cutting this When I explained about emotional eating, it's as if a light bulb went on for her because I was explaining that when we have a need and our internal need is not met and we have not expressed, truly expressed our pain, our sorrow, our hurt, uh, then we have to fill it with something and people who are who do it with oral gratification, they usually tend to either drink, smoke, or eat. And she said, wow, I used to be a drinker, and I used to smoke a pack and a half a day. Now I quit smoking. I am not drinking anymore. But I just can't stop eating. And I have gained over 20 pounds. Well, that emotional eating is what I want to talk about today. Just like divorce is also in a way first realizing that when you have gained the weight or when you have your vice, either the pack of cigarettes or the drink or even the food, in a way, you have been married to this, a pack of cigarettes. And I was going to hold on to a business card and say like this. So this pack of cigarettes, it's a buddy system. It's, it, it's like a relationship. It's there every time that you need it. It is there at times of sadness and hurt, good times and happy times. And so is eating. When you're happy, you eat. When you're sad, you open the refrigerator, you stand in front of the refrigerator. Even if you are not hungry, it's as if I am looking for something to do, to eat, to just put inside. Do I need it? Consciously, no. But there is this internal need that needs a comfort, needs to say, I want you, I love you, I, I'm going to give you. And that is the emotional component. Um, I, somehow, I cannot see anyone here, but if you are, Show me with an emoji that you are. Show me or write something that you, if this resonates with you, if you can uh, connect to what I'm talking about, if you happen to have your own. So I don't know if somehow I can't see it, but if you are here, show it to me. Or if you are on a replay, just say replay. You know, I... You can always replay and let me know what you think. And you can always be in touch with me at healwithin.com. But that's what we're talking about. It's healing within. It's no coincidence 
that until the time we have not healed the internal hurt, that the rest of whatever it is that we pick or befriend or do is not going to satisfy that hunger, that feeling of, I am not loved, I am not wanted, I am not safe. If internally we don't have the confidence or the self-esteem to say, I am good enough, I matter, that I am safe in my body, I don't need to pack it on. And that relationship with this body, first and foremost, has been developed every day in every way. That every aspect of losing weight, even if you go and throw up after food, there is no way that some people do that thinking that I'm maintaining my weight and I'm not going to gain weight if I get rid of my food. But that in itself is denying, it is dissing nutrition and nourishment inside the body. So how can you come to this point that as you eat, you know, if one time you open that refrigerator and eat everything, and in sight and whatever it is that doesn't satisfy you. And I know a client who used to eat and then feel guilty for eating it and then go throw up. And it became this vicious cycle. And what is it that we are saying to our body? Because the first person who can hear everything is these ears the first person that knows everything about what you're feeling even if you have not voiced it is your internal self your body every cell every molecule in your body knows it before it is even shared outside it is vocalized so that internal dialogue of I ate too much, I have to throw up. I did this, that was not good. I have to punish myself. In a way, it becomes the self-punishment. So I want you to feel amazing, amazing about your emotions. And that is what heal within is to heal and know that yes you can love your body yes every essence of you matters that this beautiful relationship that you have yes you did that one time the second time as you start empowering yourself and knowing that you are good enough and it's not the person you were married to but your relationship with you is so much grander and more important than any relationship you are with because if you are not beautiful inside out and love this incredible body of yours the other person, no matter how much they say and touch you and want to be with you, I don't want you to know you deserve it. It's one time in your life that you live, right? One time. We live this life right here, right now. So I want you to marry yourself and say, ah, oh, I do. I do matter. I do want to feel good, I want to tone my body, I want to be stronger in my body, I want to feel good about myself, I want to be sexy, sensual, loving, I am all of that. And no matter how big or small or thin or tiny, how your hair is blonde or brunette, you have hair, you have less hair, it doesn't matter because inside, this incredible body of yours is you. And that is the person 
you are married to day in, day out, all day long. So we can change the DNA. We can change our history. We, once you divorce, you divorced. But it does not mean you divorce you. Because you still have you. And if that weight, you no longer want it, instead of dissing it or throwing up, you eat portions that you say, thank you. I nourish my body. So the next time you open the refrigerator, you stand in front of there and you go, yes, I am just about to eat this ice cream. I am about to eat whatever it is inside. I now recognize what I'm doing. I'm trying to feel something. What am I needing? And at that very moment, you know, it takes a few sessions of doing that every time, but you get to the point of recognizing and you catch yourself and you honor yourself. What is it going on? What is it that I am doing? And why is it that I want to satisfy myself with this? So that is when you connect with your emotions and you have that aha moment. So and I'll tell share another story with you last night I was doing the same thing I caught myself doing the same thing that I share with you I've been going some going through some things difficult times and last night being home I went in front of the refrigerator and it was about 1130 and I was talk, thinking about and talk, sharing something uh, earlier. And they said, you put some honey on your foot because I got bit by that mosquito again. So putting honey apparently helps um, the swelling and the itching. So what do I do? I didn't have honey, but I had this beautiful guava syrup jam. I went and picked it up. And what do I do? Honey for my body, but I brought it and I brought some crackers and cheese and I started a cracker and cheese and put the honey and I ate one little piece and the second one is like, wait a minute, instead of putting it on my body, I'm eating it. What is going on? So in a way, I was orally, instead of expressing or writing it, I was stuffing my emotion. And the moment I recognized it on the second cracker, I went, ah. So I started writing and journaling what is happening. So in a way, I expressed it. I jotted it down. I wrote it. And by writing, by becoming one with what is happening inside, and doing some breath work, I stopped eating and having that emotional eating. Because if I had continued eating, you know what would have happened? Yes, 11.30 at night, I would feel guilty and what? Go to bed feeling guilty. Feeling guilty is a negative emotion that I would sleep with, remember? The last thing that you do at night before you go to bed is the last thing that stays within your subconscious and it lingers on in your subconscious and it plays over and over. So to do that, here's one thing you do. Rule number one, start becoming aware of when you eat and if it is an emotional eating or a conscious eating. Two, be grateful for the food that you are eating. 
as someone says, breaking bread. If you are breaking bread with someone else, being grateful that you are sitting with someone, or if you are eating, eating it to nourish yourself and this incredible body of yours. Three, say thank you to this wonderful body of yours that you are married to. Because no matter what has happened, good, bad, right, wrong, you have created or toned your body to where it is today. So if you want to modify it and change it, there are ways. Tap into your subconscious. Tap and write or even write and share how you feel about your body and the things that are happening in your life. Another one, another tip is be mindful when you open the refrigerator or the cupboards or whatever it is, you open a bag and you put your hand in it and have a little and say thank you for that and you can pack it up and put it away. And next is be appreciative of this incredible life, this incredible body, your sound mind, and your loving heart so that you accept and appreciate yourself fully and completely and heal with that. And if there is anything I can do, by all means, please contact me. Uh, you never know. It could be just one tip, two tips. It could be a session, but it could be just by responding to you via email and letting you know. Your past does not make you today. Bring some joy, share, give. And here's one more thing. The more we share, when we volunteer, when we do things in a way is we separate ourselves from our pain, from what is happening, that self-centeredness, and we help someone else. That in itself is the best thing that can happen for you because of what? You're saying, I'm here for you. And it's not all about me. So today, we talked about emotions. We talked about letting go. And when you are divorcing, you're saying goodbye to a part of you, a part of your weight, a part of cigarette, a part of drinking. And sometimes, we have to do something so drastic to find ourselves, our health, and the best is yet to come. It's a choice, and you have the choice. Make the choice and heal with it. I hope today's session was beneficial to you. And if it was, please, please, please share it. Just click share. Just click like. Just share your thoughts and ideas because it is, I'm here for you. And it is your thoughts and suggestions that I take and I utilize them to help you or another client. And if there's anything I can do, by all means, contact me, call me. You can also share this video and watch it in a replay or even on YouTube, the rest of the thing, uh, Heal Talk Tuesdays, if you have missed it. Thank you. Have an incredible week. And may God be with you. May your universal light shine upon you. It's time to evoke what was, embrace what is, and evolve to what will be. Goodbye, and God bless.